Howdy folks, this is Travis of Elston Equine Solutions, in partnership with Cloth and Cow Company. And we're up here in Wyoming on our annual uh, pack trip, uh, looking for elk, some milly deer with a party of friends. And I want to talk about different livestock uh, capabilities of restraints. And what I mean by that is uh, I've already done videos on showing how to picket a horse out on uh, on some grass on a meadow. Uh, we've talked about high lining horse. So the third thing I thought we should probably talk about is uh, electric fence material. Uh, the positives of electric fence that I can think of right off the bat is your horse really doesn't need no training. Okay, you set up the fence, and the only thing they need to know about is they touch the wire, they're going to get zapped, and that is negative feedback for them to say, "Hey, let's not press on to the electric fence." As you know, as a horse uh, touches the fence or a cattle hits the fence, electric fence, they're probably not going to go up to it all the time. Rare occasions they do, I've seen it, but generally they don't like to get zapped no more than we do, okay? Uh, so what I'm trying to get at, let's say that you have a cloudy day and you're using a charger like this one, it's solar power, powered, and the clouds are over it. The clouds been over for three days and this loses power, they're still going to think electric fence is hot, okay? So with that, I'm going to talk about the two different charging systems that you can use in the high country or the back country. This one's obviously a solar panel like I talked about. It's kind of heavy, but it runs five miles like your fence, so it puts a heck of a zap into it, especially if you're using different types of uh, uh, fencing tied up to it and that's what we're going to talk about okay so this one's kind of heavy but it's nice because it runs off of solar which is the sun and you can use it to charge the fence the drawback just like i said if you have snow you got storms you got this and that this is not going to be able to charge up your fence for long so some people like to use a battery charger like this one okay this is run off uh four d cell batteries like this or one 6 or 12 volt battery only which goes inside of here and the nice thing about this is is you have your positive and your negative all tied up in the same system so that's kind of handy it's small it's not as heavy you know as a system by itself it's dc powered but unfortunately depending on how many days you have to calculate how many packs of batteries you bring up so that's a lot of weight so it is a different system. Uh, I personally like that it has a positive and negative by itself so you don't have to ground it unless you want to off this into the ground because self-containment. The solar power system, you're, without a doubt, you're going to have to have a ground going into the surface. You're going to have to take the ground wire and develop a ground going straight into the soil. So that way it's grounded out, okay? And we're going to show you different ways of setting the system. We're going to show you different ways of setting the system up, okay? Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about is uh, what are you using for fencing? What I like to use is this flat tape uh, electric fencing. If you look inside of it, it's nylon, but it also has a little bit of silver inside of the wire. And that's what all inlaid into it. And that's what absorbs electricity and makes this hot. Now, a lot of people, this takes 50% draw off of this versus 100% you would on a normal wire electric fence. So I want to point that out.
I've already lost 50%, okay? Uh, so that's why I try to compensate with five miles a little bit more to uh, help out on situation. And there's different types of this stuff out there. You got smaller, uh, half the size of this. You also have a rope uh, that's braided, uh, yellow and black. And smaller than this, not as easy to see. But I personally like this because I can spool it up flat. And uh, I got a handle on this. I can get a tractor supply, I can spool it up. And all I gotta do is turn the handle and it'll spool right up when I'm putting it away, okay? And I can have this for one corral, this one for another one, depending on how I want to do the situation. Uh, one of the important things, uh, a feature is, how do you know electric fence is working correctly? Now, I do know old, uh, Will Rogers used to say there used to be three types of people in this world for learning things. You used to be the ones who read books to learn. Then there's a second type that would watch other people and learn off of them. Then there's a third person who just had urinate on electric fence and find out for themselves. So the point of that is I don't think you should do that. I think you should have a tester. So on this one, there's a little window here that says fence is okay. So you have a self tester on this make sure it's working properly. Or if you have this system, you can just go and get yourself an electric fence tester. Uh, they range for anywhere from $18 up to $55 or more than that, depending on what kind you get. But this will tell you how many bolts are pumping through the system. So it's pretty handy to have too. Uh, another thing I like to have is, uh, is my trusted uh, tomahawk that I use all around camp because I can chop uh, wood. I can pound in picket stakes here, tent stakes, and I can also put in the ground pool for this system. Next thing I want to talk about is the poles themselves. Okay, the poles are buried inside this PVC uh, carriers that I built. So I'm gonna have pictures of this, a video of how I put this on a horse. Generally, what I like to do is I like to take the, the end caps, PVC, and have it face towards the head of the horse. The screw down part I like towards the rear of the animal. The only reason I do that is because I don't want trees getting caught on this uh, little square piece right there. So I got one of these on each side of the horse. And one thing I'll have to tell you is when you're getting a horse flaked out, make sure they're used to that noise of these things, okay? So they don't get freaked out. All right, so I'm not going to salt your intelligence, but the little rope right here goes over top of the saw bucks. And I'll put that in the video too. Uh, so that way you kind of see the system. All right. So I put an end cap here that I can unscrew. And inside of this container, I put the same amount of poles uh, on each uh, tube. So this tube has the grounding spike that I put in with uh, the paws of lead wire. And I have uh, this is the ground stake with wire attached on it already. And I have it inside of this tube. Okay. I want to make sure both my tubes are exactly the same way. Inside this tube, I have all of the holes that are designed for an electric fence, especially the webbing tape kind. Okay, and these are real simple. All you do is uh, grab them, separate them off of each other. And then you got this little step right here. So the step, you just take it in the ground, place it down there, and step on it. And voila, and then what I do is just put the webbing right through this, and that's what we're going to do. So inside that tubing, I set out the grounding uh, stake. On this tubing, what I have is a little shortened down T-post. I 
remember all about packing in the high country is you gotta make sure the weight is the same for each tube. So inside of this one I had a handle for a gate to offset that piece and that tube. And then also I had to offset that spike right there. I had a little short T post. That short T post in you can see in there I had more of the fencing uh, extensions there. What this T post is, you used to sit in the ground and you go ahead and you just put your electric charger right on top of it. Okay, so that's why I have it equaled out for weight. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and go out to the meadow and I'm going to set this up, and that's what you're going to see next. Okay, so I got the last pole about ready to put it in the ground, and uh, one uh, tip I want to give you real quick is when you're setting up these corrals. Try not to make it a box, okay? Try to make it circular, kind of like what I've done right here. Uh, the reason being is you don't want a horse getting caught in the corner, they get in a fight, and then they get pushed into the wire. So it's better just to have it circular. Now, I'm gonna put this pole in. One thing I wanna talk about is the another great advantage of this system right here is I can go around vegetation like this. I can go around vegetation where a normal picket rope will get caught into it so this is one of the easier systems because uh, you gotta train a horse once again to do picket stakes uh, so they don't get rope burns on their their pasture bones and they have to have patience just going around the circle this you pick up move go somewhere else go over top of rocks go over top of logs go over top of brush whatever needs so this is a good advantage to take it to the back country with the assistance of horse going to figure out by themselves how not to get zapped all right so this is the first step second step is i'm going to start stringing uh, the electric webbing across these uprights okay if you have a split because the last time you had to cut it because you want a shorter corral or something inside the storage you can get this instead of tying a knot so it stays flatter and uh, Track Supply carries this, uh, different place, hardware stairs uh, carry this with the carry electric supplies. But all you're going to do is splice one end and just retrace over top the other one. And pull it through. And now you have a metal bar and metal bar touching so you don't lose no electricity. I just wanted to show you that to you real quick. Okay, what I'm going to show you with this webbing, if you don't have that piece of metal fastener to help connect the, you know, the two ends here together, what I'm going to show you is how to make a water knot. All the water knot is is an overhand knot. Some people call it a pretzel knot. And you're just going to pull it through loose. Now you see this better end to this better end. I'm going to take this better end, I'm going to go, and all I'm going to do is retrace everything. So everything stays really flat. A lot of rock climbers use this knot. A lot of horse people use this knot because it keeps the knot and the webbing nice and flat. So therefore I don't have no loss of electricity. Okay, and that's all it is. So I have a lot touching, flat, flat touching right there. Okay, and that's all I do for this. Alright, so this is where I started at, so what I'm going to do now is go straight down from top to bottom because I'm going to turn this into the gate latch and I'm just going to go straight down the bottom halfway and I'm just going to start wrap a little bit and I'm going to start let's go in the other direction now like that. 
Now I got my middle strand going. Alright, so we've taken the second strand, ran all the way around, and then we laced it back up top to connect to this one, as you can see. This is going to be our gate. I'm not too worried to have two strands here. Most of the time the horses know that uh, it's bad juju just with the one on here, so you're normally in pretty good shape. So what I'm going to do is just tie this handle right through the hole and insert the, the webbing through it the best I can. Draw up my tape, and all I'm going to do is attach this to the other side. And I'm just going to create a bite. Okay. Hook it on there. Then I know exactly where I need to put the tension on until it's about that tight. That's not too bad. And then what I'm just going to do is, uh, might just do a taut line hitch. One of these things like this, okay? So, or I could do two half hitches. So what's that look like? Well, real simple and come out as far as I can. I'm going to take the bitter end right through the loop over here, come back out. Now go to the outside of it and just do the same thing, which is another half hitch. Draw it down tight. Now I have the handle exactly how I want it. I can take it off and put it on. Okay. So now that I'm done with this, what I'm going to work on next is go ahead and put the ground stake in the ground, put the the main stake holder in the ground, the T-post, and then we're going to put the solar charger on top and then we'll wire it all together and we'll talk about why we're doing it. Put the short T-post in the ground, facing the sun, so I know the sun goes from that direction, kind of arcs more this way. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my charger. On this specific charger, if you look on here, if you get close up, it actually has a summer setting, a fall, spring, and also winter. So that helps you point it in the right direction. So I'm just going to place it here. I'm going to pull up and rotate everything to where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to line it up to fall. Slide my sleeve back down, won't slide off. Okay, we've got the proper angle because we're set here. Got slid on properly so it doesn't fall off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and insert the ground stick. So I lace the wire. And a good idea when you go to the high country, the back country, you set up all this stuff and rehearse it before you come out here. That way you know what the plan is, you're not wasting time when you come out here. So I'm gonna bring this ground stake over here a little bit further, because when horses generally come out the gate, you're locking it. I don't want them to swing the rear end and get, get my equipment here. So this is the grounding rod. over and I got right where the end is now it says the ground here which is green okay so I'm gonna undo it first and I've already had this thing charged up for three days on the Sun before it came here so it should still be holding this charge we've been sitting keeping it outside too been here for what two days now this second day so we've been charging it all day yesterday too I'm just going to connect it like that and put the cap back on. I'm going to do the fence. 
This is the hot wire. Okay, accidentally turned on because I heard it click it, so I turned it off. So when I hit that positive, I didn't get a shock of my life. I've had enough of them in, during my lifetime. I don't know about you folks, but uh, I join them every once in a while, but not on something like this. Okay, so what I did is I took an alligator clip and I made it easy to put on here so I can reach wherever I'm trying to go. So I'm going to take the side I've already done, place it on, tighten it back down. And I'm simply just going to bend the wire to where I reach. Connect it, bunch it up, and let it hang, okay? Now, I'm going to reach this back behind a little bit. I'm going to block the wiring thing. Now, this is the on-off switch. So I'm going to hit on. And you probably can't hear it, but I can hear it clicking. And during the daytime, it's hard to see that light, especially on this one. But nighttime, it gets a little bit darker. You can definitely see it, even though I'm clouding it up. Sometimes you can't see it. So what I'm going to do is get my handy-dandy tester and go ahead and test, test the whole system. That's what I'm doing next. Okay. What I did was go ahead and uh, put the, the tester on here. And uh, all you got to do is look for the lights going in there. I got the other end in the ground. You just put it on the fence line. And what we try to do is uh, look at the lights, and I can see it go all the way down to here, starting there, and it starts creeping up, but it's, it's by impulses. There it went. There it went. There it went. Okay, it's hard for you to see, but believe me, it's reaching up here pretty good. There it went again. There it went again, okay? And, and I'll try to do this again uh, nighttime so you can see. There it went all up. So my fence is good. And it sounds like we got some elk hunters that shot in the background. Hopefully it's our party and they got something. Hopefully I get something later on tonight too. All right, so. Okay, so we just turned out the gunner there, the Palmino, the bays in the middle, that's Bella, and Cutter on the right. And Cutter, he could be a little eccentric. And he's already chased the Palomino around a little bit inside this corral, displaying his dominance. And the nice thing was the Palomino was uh, able to escape and go around because we did this corral in a circle. And there was nowhere for him to be trapped inside of here on the corner. And kind of settled down now, I wish we could have caught that, but I uh, figured we'd describe it through words. So that way you can kind of visualize it. So the hot wire is working. This is what it looks like. And we'll draw back at a wider angle so you can see the whole corral. And then one thing I might add is uh, before the ground is uh, ate up uh, terribly over the graze, what we'll do is go ahead and move this corral to another location, and then that way the ground can regenerate itself. Nice thing is, is uh, the road apples of the horses will create fertilizer. For one, two, they kind of aerate the ground with their hooves and so forth. And three, you leave enough uh, grass there for the stuff to grow later on you have thicker grass later on for the next year so like i said you don't want to turn into a bare dirt uh, a little bit of history of this area this used to be uh, a location for elk hunting and deer hunting and bear hunting and so forth and this was an outfitter guide location for many many years the wolves came in and uh, decimated a lot of the elk herds the moose People rarely see moose up here anymore. And uh, so now you don't have as many outfitters out here with licenses to uh, do packing in with hunters and so forth. So that's why the ground is dirt at a lot of location here. And also why it's kind of ran down with a lot of stumps 
around this hunting camp. We just repurpose it, reuse it each year. This is my third year uh, being up this location and it is pretty, very pretty. Now one thing I could tell you while watching the horses eat is uh, Bill, he told me a story, he had this electric fence up here and when the moose were here, this is many years back, that moose came running across the meadow here, ran right into the electric fence and they didn't stop that moose at all because they're pretty big animals and just kept on a ch chucking and a trucking right across the the willows and the grass of the meadows to get to their side and that whole darn contraption of electric fence went with it and you could see exactly where the moose went because it was nothing but a straight line of electric fence and they had to grab everything and put it back together so stuff like that does happen out in the wild uh, we have a rare chance will happen this year because like I said uh, that was the times before the, the wolves came in up this part of the country and now you know and knowledge is power and now you became the solution thank you Okay, while well, I'm talking about this, I'm going to let you know this is the biggest uh, PVC pipe I could find diameter. In this case, it just happened to be 4 inch uh, diameter uh, piping. And then for length, all I did was take one of those vertical uh, fencing posts, put it in there, and just gave about 3 inches additional on each end of the pipe for length. I didn't want it too long because I didn't want to interfere with uh, the horse. Uh, some of it's going to be close to the horse's neck and I wanted the horse to be able to be able to do this number look left look right and so forth okay so I just went past the shoulder a little bit on uh, the horse for packing in and same thing I didn't want the back so far out I had an angle of the whole load on these pipings what I used is I drilled the uh, holes right through the center uh, you can look at it I can't remember what the dimensions are I'll probably figure it out here there's four Looks like I went, uh, oh, there's eight, so nine inches on either side of the center mark. Okay, that's what it looks like I pretty much did. And I used half inch uh, yachting rope uh, because it lasts a long time. I, all I did was a square knot and a half inch knot on the ends of it. And then that way I can adjust uh, the sling on this or top saw bucks as close or uh, as far away as I wanted on these loops. So that's all I did. Once again, that's a four inch uh, diameter uh, end cap, and then same thing with these. These are a two piece unit, and then all you do is get PVC uh, glue to go on top of it once you clean it up and bring it down. Okay, and that's all there is to it. So, really, when you go to the store, you're gonna have one piece, two piece, three piece, and then caps four piece, and that's all it is to it.